Hello there guys, this is Mislav and today we are going to talk about the difference between user space and system space. And I'm not sure if I alluded to that difference before, but even if I haven't, you're going to learn the difference in this tutorial. So user space is the space that normal processes use and system space, or also known as kernel space, is the space that only the operating system can use. See, every program has to be stored in random access memory. That means that an operating system also has to be stored in RAM, which is a shorthand for random access memory. So the operating system uses the RAM, user programs, which are your normal everyday programs, such as Mozilla Firefox use the RAM, and everyone uses the RAM basically in the computer. Now, the thing about the operating system is because of security reasons and because of potential issues, it limits the user processes to a part of RAM called user space and the operating system resides in a different part of the RAM. If any process tries to access any part of the memory which is not its own, it can't. The operating system makes sure of it. So to draw the picture, because I believe a picture does tell a thousand words, and uh, let's see if mine tells a thousand or even more words, especially when I do it this sloppy. Uh, this is the RAM, right? Let's visualize this as RAM. And so if you recall, I have actually started explaining to you in one, not only started, but I actually explained to you in one video, in one tutorial, that each process has to be stored in the RAM. But now we are going to fine grain it even more. So basically in the RAM, let's say that this small part of the RAM is the system space, which I just talked about. And the system space is to repeat the space that only the operating system can use. So only this small portion of the RAM, and you know, it doesn't have to be this small, you know, it can be larger, but you know, we are talking about this illustration. This space, this little piece of RAM is the system space, and that is the space that only the operating system can use. Now, this big thing, this big chunk right here is the user space, Right, so this is the user space and this is the system space. And the user space is actually this part of the RAM on this illustration where normal processes go. And what do I mean by normal processes? I may have been a little bit unclear in that. Well, your everyday applications such as Mozilla Firefox, LibreOffice Writer, uh, this program that I'm currently using to draw, everything goes here. And so basically this user space has even more subdivisions. And in each of those subdivisions, there is one program. So let's say that here we have Firefox, let's call it FFox. Here we have the drawing program, let's call it DP. Then we have, I don't know, I don't know what else could we have, like we could have LibreOffice, Writer, etc. right? So basically this user space contains your normal programs and system space contains the operating system. And the most important thing is that user space processes cannot access system space. So processes, the way they work, and maybe I haven't mentioned this, I think it, maybe it's important to clarify, processes can address memory because processes, as we already know, oc occupy a certain part of memory. They can't access anything outside of their part of the memory. So if Firefox tried to access something here, uh, what did we say? Hello, yeah, Lib LibreOffice Writer. So if Firefox tried to access something from the LibreOffice Writer, it couldn't do so because the operating system wouldn't allow it. By the same token, if Firefox tried to mangle around with the memory of the operating system, it wouldn't be valid and it could not do that because the operating system has mechanisms with which it prevents other processes from mangling with other processes stuff. Okay, but the important thing in this video is that system space and user space is separated 
in the random access memory, abbreviated RAM. Okay, and that's it for this video. Hope you learned something useful and I will see you in the next tutorial.